All right, time to get to some practice. Now, uh, because there's quite a few steps and I want this to be condensed and more to the point, um, there's a lot of ground to cover. I'm gonna edit this video. So you'll see a few jump cuts. Um, don't worry, you're not missing out on anything. I haven't edited anything out. Um, I just want to keep it relatively tight. Now, as I've mentioned, if you want example, and that's what we're gonna reference, uh, you need the dev kit. That's where they live, uh, provided you're on 2016 or 2016.5 and later. So select your platform, so it doesn't really matter that much for source files, uh, click download and you'll get what you need. I don't think you even need to be signed in for this to work. Uh, once you have it, the zip file itself contains a lot of stuff. You'll find libraries and things like that. Those are not the libraries we're interested in. That's for the Qt side of things. Uh, but I have unpacked it inside my 2018 dev kit where you will find the text file I mentioned that tells you, hey, the dev kit has moved. So I unpacked dev kit base in there. Uh, all I really care for here are the actual examples that I want to build. Now there is a node that we're gonna use. Uh, we'll see if it works. This has been on and off. Um, you might find it even not working maybe in one of your Maya versions. And for practice, I will suggest that you find several examples, single node ones are the easiest, and you try and compile a few of those. Now there's a solution and a VCX project. Uh, I don't care for either of those. Uh, all I want to do is grab this footprint node and make it work. Now, as we said before, the first thing you usually want to do is get yourself a project. You can add however many you want to the solution. Uh, don't be precious with this stuff, mess with it, you know, back it up if you got something that's working for you, uh, sure, uh, but mess with it. Now, add new project, uh, name project one, let me see, let me make sure that I'm not doing something silly here. So if I do new project, yeah, okay. Uh, so add, we'll probably add it in place right away. Now, in here, we want to go add to solution so that it adds it in place. Empty project is fine because we want to configure everything yourself and we can probably call it footprint node or something like that. And that's pretty much it. The solution name here, you can ignore it. We'll use whatever you already have. Now, that might take a while uh, because it's actually creating a lot of stuff internally. Um, if you set it as startup project, it also sets it as current, which is convenient. The next thing we want to do is start setting it up. Now, this is where things get a little bit more useful. So there are several properties that you're gonna find when you deal with Visual Studio. Uh, you can actually configure a kind of windows that are visible or not. You have options for your tools, uh, which you can see are pretty abundant. Now these options actually configure Visual Studio itself. And there's another set again, uh, which you can find in project. And if you have multiple projects and you don't know which one is active, you can just right click and go in properties here and this is finally our build configuration. Now, beforehand, I already know that I intend to develop a Maya plugin. It needs to be a library. So configuration type, exe, this is the first thing to change. We change it to a dynamic library. Uh, you might even want to change the build target to be MLL. Uh, I don't know if that's even needed or if it ever was at all. Uh, if you read the documentation or old examples or stuff like that, or you load some plugin that you've been provided, you might find it as .mll for a Maya link library. I don't know. It's entirely relevant. Now, platform tool set, uh, you can choose multiple here. We, at this point, for the versions I'm using and all of that, care for 2017 v1.1. Um, I got Clang, which you might or might not have. Uh, you, uh, you don't really care about this if you're on a very recent version, but you might care for 2016, I would have to test it. I don't think you do, but you might just care if you're getting build issues, ABI breakage and stuff like that for Visual Studio 2015 V130. I remember 140 compiling 2016 plugins fine. Don't want incremental builds. Uh, you don't really particularly care for the Windows SDK or stuff like that. Now, output directory and intermediate directory is sort of interesting and I'm actually gonna touch on that because I think that the way they have it, uh, the way Microsoft has it by default, makes the configuration a mess to understand. Uh, so as we said before in here, you have Maya math nodes. Now these things are very recognizable to us. These are the things we had before, Testic C we built, uh, footprint node. 
And now you suddenly start BS is a hidden directory. You don't care about it. Don't worry. Um, as we start working on these, and I hope this might be tiny text. Now um, you find the stuff. As you build things, you'll find that directories like debug and x64 start popping up in here or win32 or something like that. And this is what your projects build into. So I build test.exe as an x64 executable. I suddenly have an x64, which is the platform the architecture. And then I have debug. And then in there, I have the test.exe uh, executable itself. And these are the debug symbols. You, you don't care about the additional files for now. Now, I really dislike that. I think it's a pretty terrible idea uh, the way it's done, especially for beginners. I, I can't really say. I mean, maybe there's some situations in some large code bases where it might seem to be a good idea. Um, I just don't find it to be one. So you can always delete any of your build stuff just fine. And when you clean a solution, in fact, of all its builds, it will remove them for you. Now, output directory, this is what it was doing. It's going solution directory, platform, configuration. Um, so these are variables. Again, this might be tiny text for you. Hopefully you have Visual Studio open and you can read it on yours. This dollar sign plus a parentheses is actually saying, hey, there's a variable. That variable is tied to the project. Use that. Now, if you go in here and you go edit, it will give you the expansion in here. Again, I hope you can read the text. If you can, just use your own Visual Studio install. You should be at that point now. Um, so as you modify these, you can always tell what is going on. Now, down here as the target name, you have project name. And you have things like the project directory and so on. You can actually, um, if you want to set these up as variables, uh, that might not be a terrible idea. Um, but if you want the simplest possible thing to do, you could go and go browse Maya nodes, footprint node, and choose to be in there. Uh, and then you go, okay, the intermediate directory is now in platform configuration. So again, if you then go in edit, you will see the expansion in here. So, uh, sorry, in the output directory, I meant, uh, I was like, okay, that doesn't make sense. Um, so you'll see the dot. If you go in edit, it basically says, hey, put it in the, um, inside the main folder for this project that's actually okay and let's say that we add a part of an explicit path and we call it build uh, i think you need i'm quite positive you need a trailing slash so we do apply and now um, if we were to build if we had anything in there i would expect it to end up uh, inside Eric from parent here, we don't care about it i would expect it to end up inside the projects folder slash build we'll see about it anyway just play with it um, visual studio makes all this stuff look very intimidating uh, but the thing is it really isn't uh, it's just the standard run of the mill stuff you've done all the time with other software uh, just this makes it more intimidating now intermediate directory you might int be interested in checking some of those files at some point so call it intermediates and go dot dash and it will be local to the project itself. So I think you can actually use a variable in here. That dot should be equivalent to project there. I believe it's the variable we want, and that might or might not include the slash. So you might have to do something like that. Then whenever you want to verify, you can actually just go edit and it will tell you. So this is going in Maya nodes, footprint node, build. Um, the dot in the beginning will do the same. So this is how you use a variable, just depending on the variable you use. If it's a deer, it's gonna, it's directory, it's gonna include the trailing slash for you. If it is some name, often it won't, like project name, I don't believe it includes a trailing slash, and you might have to add it yourself. Target name, the name of the project itself, seems to make sense to me, so we're okay with that. Incremental build, all of that stuff you don't need. Configuration type. Uh, you can usually leave this by default. You don't care for MFC. The carrots set isn't really all that important to you. You don't want .NET target and stuff like that. So this is the general. And if you go apply, it's going to get saved. You want to do that frequently. It's not uncommon for um, project setting time to be a little bit crashy with Visual Studio now. This is something a little bit more interesting. And you kind of have to be careful with this. So you have release all configurations, debug, active debug. What are you doing here? 
Now, uh, if you go in all configurations, you'll see different options. Why? Because what we have just done, we were in release, has set these values for uh, the release build. Now, in this case, let's say that in here, we want to also go, okay, build, release, and intermediates, release. Now, these are values that you will want to keep for your um, these are paths that you might want to keep for all your um, ah, for your all, all your other configurations as well. So if you want your debug one, uh, you might want to go in all configurations and then set these with just variables and release your debug with our other variables. In our case, to make it simple and obvious, we're gonna go. You can see uh, dollar configuration. We are gonna do it manually. Do I recommend it? No, nah, not really. I will use variables, um, and I would use it. Uh, I would do it in all configurations at the same time. But with that said, I wanted to go over these. I think it's important that people know what is going on. Don't be afraid to mess with this stuff. You are gonna be okay. So now, when we build things, end up somewhere sensible. Now, after that. Uh, targeting project name, target extension. So that's that was a mistake I made actually. I've changed the target extension for one but not for the other in the configuration type. Now, now that is pretty serious. So if you go in all configurations, make sure that things are what you expect them to be and you can see that target extension um, was definitely not right because it's different options. Those you normally want to be exactly the same thing. And let's do we want to do the Maya thing. Now, you could, this is where you will put .mll if you really care for it. Uh, the compiler and the platform tool set and all that stuff, it's a little fine as it is. Now, platform is, however, somewhat interesting. So you have active, which is x64, uh, but the two options are Win32 and x64. And whatever you do, you can choose to do for all platforms. So what you really have here is a small matrix of options and you have on one axis the platform and that's going to be 32 or 64 bits that's what uh, win32 and x64 basically stand for and on the other axis you actually have what type of build debug or release so when you configure things, it's very possible that you're only configuring for one of these four options or for two at a time, depending on your settings. And that often confuses people, uh, rightfully so. Uh, if you don't know it and this comes up with the wrong set of choices, you're going to be in a bit of a mess. Now, I don't care for what I've done there because Win32, 32, 32-bit Maya plugins, I don't even think there is a 32-bit Maya available anymore. So. What do we do there? We go configuration manager. Do you want to save the changes you've already made? Yes, please. Uh, now in here, you can see that matrix that I was talking about and you go build and deploy, deploy you don't care about. Uh, this is where you can go and create new uh, configurations. So maybe you want to build for multiple targets. They have release for multiple Maya versions. This is where you can add things um, for now. We're not going to go into multi-builder, things like that. But these active solution platform, these we care for. Uh, as in this Win32 you've seen elsewhere, that's x86. x86 is 32-bit, x64 is 64-bit. Just remove it. Yes, I would like to remove it and never see it again. Thank you. So that makes things a lot easier because now active and x64 are just the one. Uh, X64 is all we care about. So in here, you'll still still you would still see the option in there until you restart the config. But in here, you can see that X64 is now the only option we have. Uh, now debugging VCC directories and so on. This is what we're gonna basically look at uh, following. But there you go. You want to set the projects configuration. You want to get rid of 32-bit X86 Win32. Same thing. Um, you probably want to work on all configurations uh, when you're setting various options, if you're willing to use variables, if you, you know, it's, and it's not that hard, honestly. Uh, or you can go into each of the two and manually set the path for yourself. 
uh, target name is the name of the file that will be produced the extension is obvious enough and you want to set this to DLL all right so that part is good